Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Silent Hill Ascension Post Show. I'm Eduardo, and this time I'm joined by Stefan. Hello. Uh, hello, who will be, well, essentially our guest host for this uh, post show. And I mean, Stefan, uh, it's a delight to have you back. I am delighted to be back. I'm delighted for everyone to be back and uh, enjoying what we've got coming for them in the uh, next several weeks. Of course. So, so one of the things is, well, I mean, not going into several weeks, but focusing on what we just saw, we got to see more of Rachel and Astrid kind of together there, you know, before they kind of stepped out of it at some point. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, uh, the convergence uh, has begun. And uh, we picked that up in uh, this uh, this block, and we will keep going. But we will also keep going with the stories of uh, Pennsylvania and Norway, and what exactly is going on with the children and the foundation, and so on. Yes, and and we'll have an interview with you, Stefan, to kind of clarify this stuff. As a little anecdote as well, in that last scene, we saw a drawing that Astrid made. So I said, by the way, I actually lied. I said that you wouldn't have Layla on the show. I lied. That drawing Layla did want to inform me was actually done by her. So a little anecdote there. Um, when so she's we on say, the show in spirit. She's on the show. I mean, we're literally in the show, but you know, to the audience, when we say we're developing out, we're developers on the show, we do mean it. Uh, now that said, uh, you too at home want to be part of the show. Cameos, that's how you get there. So uh, we're gonna have that pop up on screen. The production team's gonna throw it up, but it's essentially this idea for the cameo contest. You can be the extra in Silent Hill Ascension. You can take part in cameo contests regularly. These cameo contests are entered with influence point. The important aspect about all this is that you, the audience member, can be a part of Silent Hill canon forever. Each day, you and other audience members can enter that cameo contest to have parts in the series that's done with influence points. Um, so yeah, do check it out. Uh, they close pretty regularly. And as a result, you can be part of the show as you saw in one of the scenes. Now, uh, Stefan, it's been a while since we had you on the show and it's been a while for a audience in general after the holiday break. So if you can introduce a little bit about your role on Silent Hill Ascension for our audience. For sure. Well, welcome back, everyone. Hope everyone had great holidays. I am the chief creative officer at Genvid. I was responsible for uh, pitching out uh, Silent Hill Ascension to our friends at Konami and then leading our wonderful creative teams uh, in all things creative as we brought the project together, uh, built it out, and presented it to all of you wonderful fans. Wonderful. And thank you for, for being there. So, so I'm going to start, you know, obviously you're in the hot seat. Big news, right? We are back. We are back. We're back and we're uh, we're going to tell you the rest of this story and you're going to impact how it all unfolds. So, so that's the thing, Stefan. We're fully refreshed, right? We've all had a chance to take a break. Our audience, I hope as well, you've had some wonderful time and during the holidays. Uh, you know, and unlike our characters where they weren't able to reunite with your families, you at home had that option. Now, what can audiences, Stefan, this is important, what can they look forward to for the remainder of this season with, without too many spoilers? You know, just, just a little bit of a sneak, well, uh, sneaky. Uh, uh, so, you know, somehow Astrid and Rachel are able to converge with each other. There's a cult, the foundation, that has a hold on both Eric and Rachel in different ways. A whole town aligned against Carl and Astrid, missing kids to search for and find out what exactly happened to them, uncovering the dark secrets of both towns. And, of course, all of you in the audience driving these characters towards their final fates. So I'd say there's a lot to look forward to. Yeah. And, and you're correct, Stefan. We're going to come back to that concept, right? I mean, not just today and right now when we're talking to each other, but throughout the course of the season, the hosted show and within the show, right? We don't actually know 100% what's going to happen because the audience is going to have to kind of decide what that is going to be. Now, uh, now one of the things is, uh, Stefan, uh, before the break, you know, we had a lot of story moments, but what was your personal favorite story moment before the break? It's hard to pick uh, one favorite. I personally still love the deaths of Joy and Ingrid, and it's funny to love deaths, but I love the scenes of the deaths of Joy and Ingrid because they hooked folks into our intriguing new expansion of the Silent Hill canon in the first place and set the table for all of what's to come in many ways. But I will, I mean, more recently than that, I would say the death of Toby is a standout moment for me personally, because it was the first time that all of you uh, wonderful folks out there in the fandom decided the fate of one of these four characters. No, for sure. And, and by the way, we're not going to reboot that scene with Joy. I think our audience has seen it a lot. But if you ever want to, it's in catch up. It's episode one. I mean, I, I, I 
I'm actually don't tired of watching Joy die. It is it is a pretty gruesome scene. Like it does set the tone. And it took a little bit more time, but Joy dying was right away. We know what we're in for. But uh, you mentioned as well, Toby. Now, uh, Stefan, how do you? I, I know Toby's a fan favorite with the audience. So how do you personally feel about Toby's? I mean, ultimate demise here. Well, the narrative designer in me is excited about a whole audience competing and collaborating to drive his fate, but. The humanistic writer in me is disappointed that poor Toby didn't make it. Yeah, no, that's for sure. And, and, and that's the other thing, right? The, w one of the things we actually had a chance to showcase, I uh, believe during the interview with uh, Augustine, was essentially an alternative end where Toby ran away and got to survive. That was one of the uh, kind of alternative endings. And and by the way, uh, Stefan, I, uh, so, so, so by the, uh, just so our audience knows, obviously, you know, on this show, we do prepare things. We do have things written up. This is actually a question a little bit off script, but I think Stefan's sure. going to like it because one of the things with that alternative ending, Stefan, in the in the, just before the break, I had the chance to talk with Jacob. He mentioned the what if season. Uh, you know, like, can, can you explain a little bit about the what if season and, and how can fans look forward to that as well? For sure. So, you know, you saw in the previous hosted show, uh, Augustine showing off an alternative ending for Toby where he ran away. The fact that he didn't is all your fault. And <laughs> poor guy, poor guy, you did him in. Uh, but the what if season is a alternative non-canonical run back through the season where you will not be able to pick the choices that were made previously, but instead as an audience can choose other uh, from the other two choices that were not picked this season uh, during the first run of this season uh and see what happened so mm -hmm. it is literally a what if in the uh like comic book tradition where it's like what if this different choice happened well what if that different choice happened yeah, I mean, we're going to literally have, I think, given a lot of the redemption choices on the audience, a lot of bizarre world kind of dark dark twists and turns in that what-if season as they continue <laughs> as they are. But of course, like the first run is canon, so that's why it's important for all of you uh, in the audience to, to take the choices you want to see happen because that's you know that's what the episodes are made of, right? The what-if season Absolutely. is going to be that alternative look, yes. Uh, but by the way, Stefan, should we be as an audience uh, on the lookout for a little bit more, uh, let's call uh, the character um, um, endings? Well, ultimately, they will all have their final moments. So I would say, yes, you should indeed be on the lookout. Yeah. So, I mean, one of the big things, by the way, is the, I mean, you know this, right? You, as, as you were behind the product, but like, you know, <laughs> if for our audience at home, right, the fate and hope systems are really important because that was the thing with Toby, right? The, the fate was redemption, but the, the hope was uh, very negative because I think he was one of the biggest featured characters at the start as people was getting to grips with the Endura scenes. And we right. could see the difference with, say, Eric, like in that Endura scene, it was super close. Eric ended up having the hope decreasing, but Eric's hope is really high right now. Like when you look at it, it's sky high. People, I think the audience has really liked Eric so far, uh, really connected with him since Toby's passing. Yeah, I, th I think that makes sense. And, you know, yeah, it's true. The both hope and uh, fate matter. And as you saw with Toby, and so whatever character you happen to love the most, you should be out there involved, not just in their decisions, but also in their endure scenes. Yeah, no, for sure. So, you know, uh, one of the things here, and, and by the way, uh, I'm getting some Eric love in the chat, so lovely to see that. But uh, one of the things is, you know, we'll compare the two stories, right? We had the the kind of scene where Rachel and Astro were together, but again, what, there, there are some key differences, right? Because we saw more monsters appearing on the show, which I'm sure as horror fans at home, you're delighted to see. But now in Pennsylvania, we see them a lot more. The scenes are a lot more action-based. There's a lot more monsters, a lot more running away, a lot more, <laughs> do I open the red door or not? Um, but in no way, it's a lot sort of the it, to me it gives me a little bit of a mystery vibe right like what's going to happen there are monsters but it feels a lot more uh not quieter it, it, um you know it's more about the unease so, so if you could let us know a little bit more about that difference in pacing between the two locations for sure i mean the difference in pacing uh was deliberate and as you say in in pennsylvania it's more upfront in your face a bit more actiony or let's just say traditional horror jumpy and in uh, Norway, it's a bit more moody and emotional. Not to say that there isn't big emotional action happening in Pennsylvania, but sort of in, in Norway, it kind of wears that tone a little more. 
Um, and that, that comes from the story, because in Pennsylvania, we have a cult, and people react to monsters in the manner of true believers. Like, even if what they actually believe isn't the truth of what's happening to them, they are true believers, and so they're reacting to the presence of these monsters in their world in that way. Whereas in Norway, we have a town that's torn apart by a tragic past, and they're more entangled by their, their human problems and their feelings about each other now, although there is going to be more of a long build towards their own community perspective about the monsters and what's really happening to them. Oh, so that's something for the audience to look forward to, for sure, as, as things progress, because, yeah, the, the human side of the problems has to confront with oh, what they're going to, what they're seeing in front of their eyes, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Now, the, the, we talked about the convergence quite a few times, right? It was like the last scene before the break. Also, in today's episode, people got to, to watch a little bit more uh, Rachel and Astrid interacting. So uh, could you explain the significance of that event? You know, because Pennsylvania and Norway have been... You know, we saw the same monsters overall, but like relatively separate so far. So so having them together is actually kind of a, I mean, it's a decent deal here. Absolutely. I mean, it is the connecting together of the Pennsylvania and Norway storylines in a mysterious and intriguing way that goes into some of the uh, deep lore uh, that we developed for this particular take on the Silent Hill universe and what's going on uh, with our characters at a uh, a deeper level at a also a broader level and it's going to be something that uh i don't want to tell the audience too much about what's going on just that it's uh it's a it's a core part of the story but it's not one that we're necessarily going to uh wear everything on our sleeves so for those of you who love the mystery and love the intrigue and love uh you know sort of digging in and postulating what you think about uh, the truth behind the truth, that is going to provide you with some uh, fun tidbits to chew on. Yeah, so because, yeah, th there's different, you know, it's 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 true, right? There's different types of people that, that like kind of well, like watching horror shows. Some people do want a little bit more of that mystery. Some of us are like direct into the action. So we hope that wh whatever floats your boat, so to speak, at home, that you're having an enjoyable time with us here. Now, uh, Stefan, the audience chooses a lot of what goes on. So last question for you before we, we kind of move on to some of our, uh, discussing some of our narratives so far here, because we're going to talk in a little bit, right? About, uh, th this was something we did on the, I believe the Friday before the holiday break, we talked about some of the memorable audience choices, right? And that's, you know, from us at the hosted show team that what we believe was, you know, fun representing whatever it you would like to call it. Now, for you, Stefan, what was the audience choice that was the most memorable for you? Yeah, so again, it's a little hard for me to pick one most memorable, considering we've got a lot of interesting things going on. But like, I would say one of them was the decision about what to do with the evidence of Carl's guilt, because it was pretty memorable to me that you all chose to have Astrid rat out her dad to the cops, which I found uh, <laughs> kind of interesting. Yeah, that was, that was a long time ago, but I agree with you on that. It's um, a little bit like, come on. <laughs> more, more, more recently, though, uh, when Eric told Krista that he was interested in her rather than remaining loyal to Rachel in these trying times when Faith is missing and the worst fears of all Foundation members seem to be coming true in the form of the withering. I mean, you know, extreme circumstances do change people in unpredictable ways, but I also thought that was a little bit interesting and maybe a little scandalizing. Well, I mean, as you said, the faith is gone, right? So, oh, sorry, the character, <laughs> right, my bad. But that's twice I met as a terrible joke. Now, the, the thing with, uh, you know, now, now the thing is, I one of the things on the host, I'm, I'm lacking the fan. Uh, we'll, we'll, don't worry for hosted show fans, specifically of our lore. We One of the things we've loved as well is the Carl and, and Mete. Actually, we're going to throw up those decisions on screen. Our production stream is going to throw up the audience choices from kind of the, before the break that like for us were really memorable and, and kind of the first one that's going to appear on screen. Um, um, is like, how will Carl respond to Mete kissing him? And that you all chose to, ki to kiss her back. That was actually really close. I remember that being like a really close decision Then like lovers pulled through a little bit at the very end. Uh, we'll discuss that in a bit, but like uh, obviously the for the host on the hosted show, this was a really fun moment. We say a scandalo, have the fans going. And don't worry, the fans will come back. Um, now, uh, the other two kind of uh, uh, other ones. One of the fun ones was like, how will Astrid react to her dead mother talking to her? This was one of my favorite decisions because the audience has been mostly on redemption with Astrid, really been on the side of Astrid. You know, I think the audience 
I don't know if they relate or not to Astrid, but you know, like she's a character that like uh, you want to cut. Like they've been on her side. They've tried to you know um, to see things in a way that makes sense for her and that go in that direction, right? Redemption. But for that one, where Ingrid shows up, they're like, you chose the men in apology. So I love that. I love. <laughs> I love essentially going, talking back to the world, like enough of this BS, it's enough and got to talk. But of course, the decision, I think, uh, favorite and I think the key moment, right, was what will Toby do for the severing ritual? I think we can all agree that was the decision of the first <laughs> couple of weeks, right? And you, the Ajahn, chose sacrifice himself. Now, that was very close, Stefan. Oh, right? yeah. We, like, could you tell, because, okay, so, so we're like obviously in front, the host, and, and but like you are, you were behind the scenes along with the rest of the development team. Can you say a bit about like what happened behind the scenes? Because we were, I know our whole team was watching that one really closely. Well, I mean, uh, what happened behind the scenes was it was a close race in the points. And uh, in the end, Toby chose to uh, sacrifice himself. But at a deeper level, um, you know, uh, Toby, um, any character's final fate is not determined by just one decision, but that obviously was a very important decision uh, for Toby. Because you've got the actual fate of the characters as determined by the fate and hope systems, as we talked about earlier, where Toby was redeemed, but his hope was very low, so he did not physically make it, although we can say that he uh, at least had his... Um, his redemption morally, right? Even though he died. Um, and part of that path of redemption was Toby not being selfish and thinking only about himself in this moment um, <clears throat> and trying to do something uh, for the greater good, being self-sacrificing. And uh, the audience choosing to push him in that direction was a very interesting and important character moment for Toby. Um, as he was on his way to uh, meeting what turned out to be his final fate uh, for, for, yeah. this, for this canon universe. No, for sure. And, and, and you know, that decision was labeled final fate. I think that's one of the important things, right, Stefan, that the audience can look forward to. If something says final fate, I would be very careful with whatever that decision says. Yeah, Consider. I mean, so, so, but it's important to note that that is indicating to you that the final fate is now coming. And that this will be the final choice regarding fate that you get to make. But it is not this one choice is the only thing that's being considered when determining this character's final fate and their final outcome. There's the, the hope, obviously, as seen with Toby. Um, but there are all of the fate choices along the way before we reach, before we trigger the final fate decision have contributed to that character's final outcome. And then the, the final fate decision obviously is very important to that. It carries weight, but it's not 100% of determining that character's uh, outcome. Right, it's a, it's about a character's development, not their final decision. It makes sense, Correct. right? Like, right, but what, what was the path that kind of the character went down? That's, That's right. Okay. So, so as a result, right, we're gonna talk about a decision that opened today um, so again, not a final fate decision, but it is a fate decision. So that's going to be on screen. It's going to be how will Astrid find out what happened to Hagen? And the options are, uh, you know, going to Hagen and grill her for the truth, offer an olive branch, or if drop on her. And, and again, right, redemption, suffering, damnation, in the sense of what you're deciding Astrid does is part of her character development, and that's going to ultimately decide what happens uh, to her. But um, I, I find Astrid to be a, a an interesting character because Rachel is kind of like uh, working within the the confines of a cult, and it's kind of a difficult one to operate. But but Astrid has to essentially contend with kind of like the family the family drama, so to speak. Right, the sister has to contend with her dad and, and coming back together with Mete, just going like, "What the fuck?" Is She's just like, "The son's missing. Everything's going to pieces." And then, like, what the fuck is this? Is that really? Which I, I, I actually really like the character. Like, I, I think there's a lot of, uh, like, her development arc is is uh, fascinating in terms of like what she has to deal with and how she has to navigate it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the Astrid comes into this situation with no conception of 
horror as a thing that might be real beyond sort of like the standard human thing, terrible things might happen in my life. And they have happened in Astrid's life. Um, but so she's really dealing with this at a pure humanistic emotional level initially. And, you know, the, the very notion that there might be uh, uh, horrors that manifest in some, whatever way as monsters, as this encroaching fog is completely new. And what she is having to deal with is that impinging upon her life while she is trying to deal with these very deep emotional issues of her mother's death and her child's disappearance and what's happening to her father is her, you know, is he falling apart? Um, and obviously like the whole family, the whole town are going through a variety of things that Astrid has to deal with. And she comes from being this very put together rational person in response to things in her past um, and is seeing all of that torn up in front of her and having to react to that. Um, whereas Rachel, on the other hand, uh, is perhaps uh, not the most likable character in the world, but is in an interesting situation being someone who is a true believer and is confronted with the possibility that what they truly believe is in fact true. <laughs> but at the same Be time- Be careful what you wish for essentially here. But at the same time, maybe not necessarily personally beneficial and the terrible things that she's going through may be penance manifest, may be that uh, she is some kind of cursed uh, uh, vessel that must be destroyed. It may be simply that what she believes is wrong and she's been taking terrible actions. All of these things we've put on the table for this character to wrestle with and for you in the audience to wrestle with when that comes up in choices um, to help shape that character. So I think they're both interesting characters in different ways. I think Astrid, for a lot of people, is more uh, perhaps relatable. But I think Rachel is in a situation that is very realistic, where you may have bought into the tenets of an organization out of true faith or because it's what is going to keep you uh, safe and perhaps prosperous in your society and then you see that falling apart and you're not sure where to go and you see it impacting your personal life in these terrible ways and you're wondering on one level do i deserve this but on another level how do i save my family and myself and i think like they're both going through that sort of broad arc of everything's falling apart and how do i save my family and myself but from two very different perspectives that i think can be you know, there, there's a there's a saying in screenwriting school, which is characters don't need to be likable. They just need to be interesting. And I think Rachel is also an interesting character um, that has a lot to wrestle with and a lot of interesting um, uh, choices and, and uh, uh, dilemmas to present to the audience. Yeah. And, and I mean, one of those big choices coming up, right? Because I mean, sacrificing your eye not not the easiest decision to make but that's the audience to choose right it's between burning the book sacrificing the eye now i know what i would do if i had a dark book telling to sacrifice an eye but you the audience might have different things and rachel might believe differently and that's what matters um because you know as you were saying stefan right about their character developments the thing is it's you know it's for our audience to kind of write in the the remaining pages so to speak uh so Again, one of the things as we end our show is normally I, you know, recap a bit the story. But Stefan, you've done a, you, you've been here. So as a result for our audience, I hope that that was a good insight into kind of what's going on in the characters and what to look forward to. So as a result, I don't really need to recap. See, my job is easy. Now, I want to thank Stefan for his time because my job was easy because you were here. So thank you so much, Stefan, for, for being the guest here. Thank you for having me. And thank you to all of you fans out there that are watching and participating. Uh, we do this for you and we're excited that you're excited. Excellent. So again, uh, for, for everybody here, now uh, we're gonna talk about our next shows briefly. Our next shows are, that's gonna be up on stream with the production team, uh, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So, so we're going to appear uh, as hosts on the pre-show uh, at 5.40 p.m. Pacific next Wednesday. The show, though, is every day at 6 p.m. Pacific. So tomorrow, 6 p.m. Pacific, tune in, new episode. And then there's usually a post show right after on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays when we do have that. Now, 
uh, Wednesday specifically. Today we wanted to catch up on, an, on the story, make sure you're up to speed. Wednesday we'll catch you up on some of the more, so to speak, technical updates, what we've done on the development side, what's been going on. Um, kind of let you know the improvements that have been coming up on the up and up in uh, Silent Hill Ascension, so we'll get to fill you in at that time. In the meantime, remember, because you're, you're coming back, remember that puzzles do raise hope. So you do get access to those um, whenever you feel like it. So uh, if you're returning or you're a new user, uh, the Arcane Library awaits you as soon as this broadcast ends, and then you have a chance to go in, do some puzzles, uh, raise the and then raise the, the hope of uh, the featured characters within there. All that said, this was Eduardo. I was joined by Stefan. Again, thank you so much for being here. And I was joined by you, the audience. It was a wonderful time having you back. But for now, we're going to sign off. I will personally see you in a not quite Wednesday. I should be back Friday, but you'll see uh, Layla and Noah. For Noah fans out there, she'll be back in action, hopefully on Wednesday. Um, and we have, a few, obviously, surprises for you in our shows. Don't miss tomorrow's episode, uh, 6 p.m. Pacific. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. It was a pleasure being here with you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.